This video describes how to cannulate the coronary sinus from the right side utilizing the standard Worley CSG and a modified multipurpose guide. We, we start by partially inserting a standard CSG into the right atrium and then removing the dilator and the wire. At that point, we would then withdraw the tip of the Worley sheath until it reaches the RA-SVC junction. The curve of the Worley sheath uh, keeps the tip against the lateral wall. At this point, a large section of the Worley sheath is hanging out of the right side of the pocket. Next, we need to hand shape a multi-purpose guide uh, into something that looks like a braided core. And so you can see here, this is a, the, how the guide comes out of the box, and this is how it is, looks after it's been hand-shaped. The initial shape of the multi-purpose guide is successful, is critically important into successful hand-shaping. I found that uh, several guides can be hand-shaped properly based on uh, being in other locations where I didn't have the guide that I'm typically used to. The one that I usually hand shape is the Boston Scientific Mach 1 MP2, but I found that these other guides uh, listed below can also be successfully hand shaped. Two points here. One, number one is that it's important to use a guide and not a diagnostic catheter because with a diagnostic catheter, there's only room for one wire. The other point is that it's better to overshape than to undershape because uh, once in the body, the curve tends to relax uh, with the heat of the body. Reinforcing the point that the right shape is important, I have found through experience that the Mach 1 MP2 shapes nicely Whereas if I try to shape a Mach 1 MP1, uh, the tip's not long enough and it doesn't locate the CS. So starting with the right shape is very important. Once you have it shaped, we're going to attach the um, guide to the injection system. And again, the injection system is a critically important part of all the various uh, approaches to LV lead implantation that I discuss. Um, and in this case, we'll attach the guiding catheter to this hemostatic valve. That will allow you to manipulate the catheter um, and have the, your assistant inject contrast. And then once you have the tip of the catheter in the proper location, you can open the Y adapter of the hemostatic valve and advance a wire uh, into the CS. So the modified multipurpose guide is advanced out of the whirly sheath and then indirect and directed uh, towards the right ventricle. And counterclockwise torque um, and the, and the uh, applied. The, the sheath tends to hold the, uh, the multipurpose catheter along the lateral wall of the right atrium. Uh, as you remember, the CS is cannulated from the left side. The catheter actually comes across from the left and banks off the, the right atrium. So the whirly sheath here, holding the multipurpose catheter on the lateral wall of the right atrium, um, tends to help the catheter behave as if it was coming uh, from the left side. The large curve uh, of the modified guide places the tip of the in the right ventricle high on the annulus, and then counterclockwise torque is applied, and the guide is withdrawn to the tricuspid annulus. So essentially, we're cannulating the CS in the same fashion as we would as if the guide was coming uh, from the left side. When you apply additional counterclockwise torque, the tip will drop. Uh, towards the CSOS, 
and then a two millimeter puff of full strength contrast will confirm the tip of the guide uh, is in the CS OS. At this point, we'll open the hemostatic valve on the Y adapter and, uh, and, and advance an angled tip 035 glide wire uh, into the coronary sinus. You can use an AL2 or an AL3 guiding catheter uh, to locate the coronary sinus in place of the mod modified multipurpose. However, uh, the AL2 or AL3 guide can be difficult to advance over the glide wire into the coronary sinus. So I, I think it's better to modify a multipurpose. Once the uh, glide wire is deep in the coronary sinus, um, the guiding catheter is advanced deep into the coronary sinus, and then a Cook Amplatz wire is advanced through the guide into the coronary sinus. So this will put two wires in. Now as you're advancing the Amplatz wire, you want to hold on to the glide wire so that the friction between the two doesn't advance the glide wire and knock you out of the CS. And I want to make emphasize the importance of using a Cook J-tip Amplatz wire rather than a Boston J-tip Amplatz. And that's because the distal section of the Boston wire is very floppy. So what you get is a floppy section of wire into the coronary sinus with the transition from floppy to stiff right at the os if you use the Boston wire, which tends to knock things out. You could use a straight tip, short taper Boston Scientific Amplatz wire. However, I'm uncomfortable using a straight tip uh, and it's hard to get a really good J on a, on a straight tip. And in addition, the Boston uh, short taper Amplatz wire is long, long enough that it's uh, difficult to work with. If you need additional support uh, to stabilize the guide here, you can always exchange the glide wire for a second Amplatz wire. So once we have our two wires in place, uh, we'll tighten the hemostatic valve and then hold the MP2 guiding catheter in position and advance the uh, Worley sheath, which is what we're doing here, advance the Worley sheath uh, into the CS over the, uh, st sta over the uh, guide stabilized by the wires. Once the LV lead is placed, as you can see here, we have an Amplatz wire back in the CS. Um, and that's important because when you remove the sheath out of the coronary sinus, there's a tendency for the sheath to whip around towards the lateral wall of the right atrium. So if you have an Amplatz wire uh, in the coronary sinus, uh, as you withdraw the sheath, it will stabilize it so that it doesn't uh, whip around and knock the lead out. The other point is that you want to have uh, a soft stylet to the tip of the lead. The stylet helps to stabilize the lead as the sheath is withdrawn. And in addition, once uh, the sheath is removed, uh, you'll need to remove the Amplatz wire. Uh, it's important to keep the stylet in place bef uh, until the Amplatz wire is removed. If the stylet is removed first, the J tip of the Amplatz wire can catch and dislodge the pacing lead. And I've done that. So keep the stylet in there. So that's my uh, discussion on how to cannulate uh, the CS utilizing the Whirly sheath. Thank you, and if I can be of any help, let me know.